All eight. <laughs> I have eight Vencers. I have like seven on Moto and one in real life. So, but uh, that deck was pretty miserable. There was a, it was like 22 blue and red cards plus a Koth, basically, or a poison deck splashing for a rest and revoke existence. Like two terrible, terrible decks. All right, looks like we're about to get underway here. Nice. We've got Lewis on the left, Alex on the right. These guys are both Star City Games Open Series ringers. Oh yeah, for sure. And they almost certainly know what each other are playing. Uh, they tend to uh, talk, so there's that's something to keep in mind for the mulligan decisions, I suppose. I think Merfolk is generally assumed to have the advantage against counterbalance. Uh, I know some, certain players think that it's not as big an advantage as uh, many believe, but the data actually bears out Merfolk's a pretty significant edge over the uh, performances we've kept track of. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think Lewis's spice may be lightning helix. If I'm going to, uh, if I'm going to guess what his spice is, because last night he had some lightning helixes out and he was that's singing about how much he loved lightning helixes. So. <laughs> if I if I had to guess, that's some chili pepper, say, I would say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not not a card I would expect to be seeing if I were sitting across from Lewis and his counterbalance deck. <laughs> Lightning Helix is just a, a magic card. Like, that's a real one. Oh. Or he may just have Stoneforge Mystics. That's pretty... Ooh. That's, that's I, pretty like, I like Stoneforge Mystics so much. I like his dog sweater here. I know. I actually, I wore the Lewis Laskin. I called it my Lewis Laskin uh, costume to work a couple days last week as we were... During release week, I had my pajama pants and a sweater. <laughs> I ran out of laundry. Traveling does that to you. You just don't have enough time. I traveled like three weekends in a row and couldn't wash my clothes. It's the pajama dragon. Yep. The old pajama pants at work. No shame. No shame. <laughs> Looks like Lewis is sending it back. Yeah, I got, when I was stuck in Kansas City, uh, Lou was also stuck there. Both of us had had our yeah, flights canceled, that. and then we were just stuck there. We had nothing to do. And uh, the one night, there were, the restaurants in the area were having like deals to just try to get people in the door. So there's this really nice restaurant called like the Chop House or something. Oh. And we went there to get prime rib the one night, and uh, you know, we, we were stuck inside. We needed one, we needed a nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I got prime rib. Um, Rashad critiquing his choice of cuts. <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> Lou, uh, <laughs> Such daggers. So Lou and I go into the restaurant, and it's, it's a fairly nice restaurant. Like, I'm wearing, like, a button-up shirt and, like, jeans. And just, like, the way I normally dress. And everybody else there is in, like, a suit yeah. or, like, cocktail dresses. Oh, like, ev like, everybody there is, like, very well-dressed. And Lou is wearing, like, a hoodie and pajama pants and a backwards so hat. <laughs> I went to, I actually went to a chop house for my, uh, my dad's birthday. And I remember, like, they were picking me up from, I'd been, I think, playing Magic all day or something. And I didn't have time to change. So, like, I went there. And I knew I was dressed ridiculously, but I went anyway. But generally, you know, you're supposed to get a little, little bit gussied up, you know. Collar, maybe three buttons, if not the full. Not the full button. <laughs> full. It's not the full amount of buttons, just a few. Is Lewis going down to five here? Looks like it. Oof, the daggers. Well, that's unfortunate. Got a pretty classic shuffle technique. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, it's pretty rough going to five cards. Eh. It's legacy. You can know, always just open powerful. land, land, top counterbalance, and start playing magic. You know. I'm pretty sure you would have got zero lands. Really? Yeah, good enough. Uh, looks like he's hanging onto this one. Force the vial. Days. Oof. This one's all over already. Yeah. <laughs> like that's that's pretty close. Pass turn with no land. Is that a Mox Opal in there? No. I can't be right, can it? He has a Noble Hierarch, my bad. Main deck Pithy Needle, wow. What a master. Force of Will. Mastery does not always pay. Jerry's also main decking Pithy Needle using Trinket Mages to search it up. Which uh, he said Adam Kozak was doing that as well, so I assume, yeah. We'll hire at Counterbalance and either Eloquary Misty Rainforest. Well, I guess we can start a little something something here. I'm gonna play the Noble. That's back. Don't. Don't do 
Uh oh. Yeah. It's a lot of action. Now does he uh, does he have access to a basic force? Because that might have been something to consider in this spot. The noble can get him the the blue he needs. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I mean, I don't think it's gonna, honestly. I don't think I, it would yeah, matter. I don't think but it's really relevant. At like this he's point. gonna die to that coral home commander either way. And it's his point like has a cure in play even. Yeah. Like it's it's not good. You bad news. So he's counting it up to make sure he's dead before he concedes, I guess. <laughs> that's what it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's a million. Alright, so I think he's just going to pack this one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, play the knight for uh, posterity's sake, I guess. He's not dead on board, he's just dead. Unless, oh. Whoop. Oh, never mind. <laughs> My, how things change. An additional Lord of Atlantis and a uh, additional, uh, or a new Merfolk Sovereign. And they're unblockable. Yep. That's a lot of damage. Island Wook. That game was not very close. Nope. Oh, uh, well. I mean, that can happen, though, with the, uh, the in the matchup, but it's when oh, they stick yeah. that vial, you know, you just get rolled really fast. The double force. Ooh. Alex had all the creatures he wanted and just the right amount of uh, counterspells to jam through everything he needed. I mean, it's pretty rough in general when you have one of those hands where yeah. you're, like, I mean, the you're mulling so into five and you have yeah. to force something on turn one and then they daze it. <laughs> it's like, oh, I have three cards in my hand. This is bad. Yeah. Oh, so gross. Between days and Force of Will, and then all the Lords, like, Vile's the only real card the Merfolk deck doesn't have just a ton of. So hard to fight them early, and they're so good at just pushing the momentum of every game. I mean, the Vile's just, like, against counterbalance decks. When you resolve it, like, you always feel like you've won already. Yeah, it's really difficult to fight. I mean, covering the San Jose Finals, uh, it was just a Vile in Game 3, basically, that just rolled Jerry all by itself. Yeah. His opponent just, you know... Curved up, goblin, goblin matron, like, goblin well, ringleader, goblin ringleader, like, just never yeah. stopped. <laughs> I was watching that match, and it was basically, like, people in the chat were like, why did he keep that? And it's like, he has a needle and a matron, he actually can't lose, like, <laughs> or vial and a matron, yeah, rather. Like, yeah, like, it was completely insane. And Jared, like, drew multiple fire spouts, just yeah, couldn't uh, fight one vial. Beat. That's the thing, goblins... So much card advantage, it can be an aggro deck, a combo deck, a control deck, you can shift all it of those modes. It can be all modes. at once, yeah. yeah. Like, so powerful. Combining Vile with Mana Disruption is actually just completely silly. Like, Merfolk tries to do it in the same way. Rather than disrupt your mana, it disrupts a different resource, your tempo, by countering the spells you play. But it's the same co basic concept, make you waste your turns doing nothing while they continue to swarm the field with dudes. There are is Rashad. We're, we're using these. I thought those were presents. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's fair. I've seen them. I'm good. So we have uh, all three of our Rashad them. tokens that. Uh, oh, click, click. <laughs> I mean, if I can't see it, how can I know which one it is? I know there was like a zombie. A skeleton. Ad nauseum. Oh, did he do it for right? cards? I didn't even notice that. I can't see it. Yeah. I remember. I just said you had like a zombie, a skeleton, like a bear one, didn't you, or something like that? Like a beast, some kind of creature. I know I have the zombie right. You definitely have a zombie in there, buddy. All right. That's all that really matters. <laughs> all right. So. Lou is still sideboarding. He's got to be careful. You only have so much time to sideboard. <laughs> Getting bashed in like three minutes kind of <laughs> gives him a little more, I guess. I actually got a warning for taking too long to sideboard at a feature match. We were like talking, mm -hmm. and it was like... I, we and he was just like, by the way. <laughs> and it, it, wasn't, it wasn't my opponent. It was oh, just the like a table judge was just like, give both of you a warning. We were just, <laughs> 
yeah. like our game one finished in like I mean, two turns. Rightly so. People don't realize, to be fair. Like, yeah. it's definitely a time limit thing. I remember I was actually playing in a uh, in some qualifier and. Uh, a guy would like while his friends were watching the match, and they were like, "You should call him for slow play." And like I was, I didn't say anything, like because I'm not supposed to be talking to them. But the clock was winding down. He's like, "I get two minutes of sideboard." At that point, I was like, "Well, you have taken four, because we started at ten, and now there are only six minutes left." But people don't realize how long it takes sometimes. It's one of the important reasons to sleep your sideboard. Every time I see someone not do that, it's like they're just taking time away from themselves to think and make decisions, making it way more likely to get a warning. Absolute law. Yeah, having an unsleeved sideboard is just generally a bad, bad, bad decision. <laughs> what are your reasons, Rashad? I think I have sideboard cards again. Like the green version of these to play, like, like, potion grip to get rid of, uh, counterbalance and stuff. Like, what? You're doing it wrong! Yeah, you would know. You're the one who's playing Blade Star. More folk decks than yours when no one else was. It was good, though. I agree that those are concerns, but I think they're both mitigated if you uh, do the right things. Like if you're shuffling your sideboard into your deck as your method of sideboarding, the wear stays a lot more similar. Like it's still different, but it's still... Well, you're not going to actually get in trouble. Uh, I mean... I've it's not mark cards. It's not mark cards uh, pattern if there's just minor wear on all your sleeves and it's like indistinguishable. I'm the one who had the sorted deck before I hit shuffle. <laughs> My deck was very much sorted when I opened the box just now. <laughs> I was like, oh, we got this insane shuffle. You didn't have any sort of good you? Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, you, you shuffle in the full 15, and like some of the sleeves are going to wear differently, but that's just an acceptable amount of wear. You can also switch sleeves. Like take 15 of the sleeves you've been using and <laughs> switch your sideboard <laughs> sleeves, which I see a lot of people do that. Well, no, like just in the tournament, like the 15 you were using, you just use those as your sideboard <laughs> sleeves now, and the new ones are in your deck. But you can't get marked for that because it's 15 random cards. I mean, you're the one sleeving and desleeving cards every round. <laughs> oh man, you're not boarding enough cards. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Only four cards. No oh, man, I I like to be boarding in pretty much six in most matchups. Like I try to rig my sideboard to get that amount. That's all you need. Two masterful to need a, the full amount. I mean, I'm I'm pretty low level, so low level mage here. I mean, you're a pretty high level mage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I love do love the I'm bullets. Yeah. yeah, bullets make you feel so good. It's so bad sometimes, but it feels so good every time you're like, oh, I drew that one card. I remember in Atlanta, I was tell even telling you, like, we ran a split on removal, three fallouts and two lightning bolts, and we always had the one we wanted whenever we wanted it, <laughs> so obviously the numbers were perfect. Like, literally, like, I had the lightning bolt for the turn one goblin guide, and then the fallout drew on turn three for the two health sparks and a goblin guide, and I'm like, ah, professional mage, <laughs> like, would have been completely wrong the other way, I'd have just been dead, but... Got a pithy needle early, I assume for Vile. Yeah, I assume he's going to name Vile. Yeah, with this no, needle. no days here, buddy. Oh, he's he may be contemplating. He's probably just trying to sell him on a force more than actually contemplating yeah, I mean, forcing. Like he would just snap force it if he had the vial. Wasteland. Interesting. <laughs> Maybe he figures on the play he can actually keep enough tempo against vial. Well, he's got a vial. And he drew his own wasteland. That's a little awkward. But I guess against the mono blue opponent, it's probably not that big a deal. Stone Stoneforge Mystic. Mystic. This could be exciting. Sort of body and mind. <laughs> Probably sort Jitte. Sort of fire and ice. Oh, sort of fire and ice? Yeah. I don't know. That's interesting. Sort of fire and ice? Yeah, yeah. Well, he has the Jit in his hand, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, he actually has his Jit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he already has I mean, I assume jet. he runs a Jit. <laughs> I think you can search for just to keep the Merfolk player off it, generally. Silver Girl revealing the Percy. Now, for the longest time, I thought Curse Catcher could actually counter non-creature spells. I thought it was like negate Force Spike, not instant or sorcery Force Spike. Needless to say, that made Merfolk a lot harder to beat in my testing. It's a <laughs> moral of the story. You might want to use a real card every now and then when you're proxying. <laughs> and Curse Catcher would be so good. <laughs> it, would, it was really good in my testing. <laughs> like We were like, man, Merfolk's the best deck ever. <laughs> Why don't more people play with this card? Jeez. <laughs> One mana spike fell hatchway. Yep. We figured that one out before the tournament, luckily. <laughs> mm. 
Is that, there? Is that another mystic? Uh, yeah. Is that a cold eyed sulky? Is it? I oh, no, yeah, you're cold right. Eyed that is a cold eyed sulky. Ho ho ho! So, another land next turn will enable some real shenanigans. Yeah. With that sort of body in mind. Or sort of fire and ice. Bleh. Made my joke and now I'm stuck on it. <laughs> How horrible. One of the awkward things about lines like this is it's, you know, your, set it, your plays are really obvious, so your opponent's got the full amount of how am I going to try and interact with this line, you know. It's yeah. m much harder to just spring something. The price you pay for the versatility of a card like Stoneforge Mystic. Uh, Alex, does, Alex doesn't actually have a lord yet, so that makes it a lot easier to race him. Kira, Kira is pretty good here. It's the first time it's targeted by a spell or ability, correct? Yes. So Kira will be assisting him in the race by a lot. That's pretty awkward. Uh, we may wind up having to deploy the Jit instead of the sword in order to use the counters to break Kira's shields. If he can get counters on Jit this turn, then on the next turn he'll be able to actually sword up, sword up and sense. kill a guy. Yeah. I think that's probably going to be what he winds up doing, but we'll see. If he has a different way to break the shields, that would be ideal. I mean, you want to start that clock and start drawing cards as quickly as you possibly can. Or, I mean, maybe he, sh he could just try and race. I don't think that's going to win him the game, but he could just send the two at the face every time. Nope. Alrighty. Oh, submerge. Vomit. That's... That's probably just going to be too much right there. So much tempo lost right here. Yeah. He literally just lost turns three and four, basically. His opponent didn't even play as well. Merfolk's so good. Or tap lands, I should say. Yeah. I mean, he's just... Bash you. I mean, imagine this game if uh, Lou had named... So Lord Vile. of Atlantis off the screen. You guys can't see. But yeah, if he had named Vile, he'd definitely be facing down a significantly smaller attack force here. Is that a... Bur Mishra's factory? In a, for uh, Burton Shane? He plays one in addition to the Mutawalt, so wow. I mean, taking advantage of the fact that he's monocolored. Add some more man lanes. Yeah, you can pump your Mutawalt, sure. Just most players stick to the four with the special with Wasteland around. But that's interesting. It's how many lands is he playing? Do we know? Um, we can find the list. We should have the list. I removed the force of We're not playing Cancel. At San Jose, the guy. Uh, who didn't have, he forgot to bring me to vault, so he just played spell pierces instead. <laughs> Top eight, thanks. <laughs> just ran spell pierces. Same I, card, right? I, <laughs> see, this is my argument, though. Like, I don't understand. Like, I don't draw enough lands when I play 25. Like, these. Like, Gotta run good to win a tournament. That's what he said too. And he asked me, he's like, I mean, I figured I have to run good to win anyway. <laughs> I've seen similar decisions made. One of my one of my friends at a uh, in, at Pro Tour Amsterdam against uh, someone, he just kept a one line hand. He was like, I have to run good to win the match. So I decided I wanted to run good by drawing land. <laughs> yeah. so these are the there. terms under which I'd like to play the game. <laughs> Lewis trying to figure out some combinations, no doubt discussing uh, the various ways in which this board is horrible for him with Alex right now. Yeah, <laughs> he's a narrator. I like narrators. I'm a narrator too. So, yeah. like, well, this is awful. This is awful. I'm gonna get beat if I do this. And all Florida players are narrators. I feel like we're chatty. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Ben Stark narrator. I don't actually think I talked like to people until I started playing Magic. But Magic literally was what made me a social person. So I don't think that's a good thing necessarily, but. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, we're all the we're chatty Cathy's. Ooh, come on. This looks so bad. Yeah, it looks Lou. grim. I don't see a line. I'm no, no Lewis Laskin, I suppose, but. And he's looking for one, but. I, I get the feeling really. he needs to crack his Misty. Like, I actually think he might have a just survive kind of thing here. Yeah, he's looking at the cure. 
I think he has a Vendillion quick in his hand, but he can't play it as a blocker without. What is, is that a Vendillion? Yeah, it's a Vendillion. He's gonna get rid of that cold eyed selfie, I guess. Yep. Swords, wow. That might actually be relevant somehow. Probably not. <laughs> no, I mean, he, uh. He can block Kira. He's. Then you can target one of my once. Uh -huh. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. And then I can swords it. <laughs> The thing is, like, even in this spot, he's only close to, like, living more than anything else. So he's not actually close to winning. Like, there's not much difference between losing a turn later and just losing in a lot of spots. I mean, so does he survive even? No. After the block? No, He right? can't kill the Lord, so the Island Walk is going to get yeah, everything else through. Just so that's just enough to murder him. If he had, like, some other way. So if you're playing some yeah, it's good. I was just confused. I thought it was more like it. You had way too many.